Hello beautiful souls, so it is Zach Hater here and in this video today, this is essentially a byproduct of a video from the live stream that I did two days ago where a friend of mine came onto my live stream on Facebook and commented asking about four different questions about predeterminism and Earth's destiny, um, is the hell that we live in predetermined and yeah, why do, why do people come back? and reincarnate several times because they're not fulfilling their life purpose on this planet. And uh, yeah, also about choosing heaven upon earth before the rapture. So here we go. I'm just going to say them out loud. So the first question was, so this earth and its destiny are predetermined. Is that correct? To which my answer is yes. And I believe that we are heading in a very positive direction as a collective, even if it doesn't appear that way on the surface right now there are of course versions of earth in parallel universes that are on a much more negative collective trajectory there are also versions that are on an even more positive trajectory than we are right now and everything in between of course so there's all the gray in between of every kind of positive direction that we could go in and every negative direction that we could go in but in this particular version of reality, we are, I believe, heading in a very positive direction on the whole. Second question. This hell we live in is predetermined. Is that correct? And to which I answered, in a way, hell represents the potential for the suffering of beings expressing themselves as third density consciousness existing within the third and fourth dimensional planes. What this essentially means, and what I mean by that is, hell really only exists within each of us, which we then project outside of us, to which we then create the experience of hell. Because we're experiencing it within ourselves, we then project that outside of ourselves, and that's all that we perceive. And yes, these challenging times that we are living through are here for a reason. Without the suffering, People would not awaken to the corruption and darkness that is present in this world at the scale to which they are right now, with all of these mass awakenings going on, on grand mass scale. So really, all of this suffering essentially that is going on right now is, in a sense, now I've got to be careful as I say this, it's necessary. The suffering is necessary, and it is also perfect in the eyes of creation. Creation has created this for a reason. As detached and perhaps as uncompassionate as that may sound in that way, we have to go through this dark period and to suffer this pain that we're enduring as a collective right now in order to realize what we don't want so that we can move towards what we do want. Simple science, essentially. It's physics playing out in real time right now in that way. Third question. So there is no way for these beings to have free will to turn the planet into heaven or on earth, and it's all predetermined. By those beings, I wasn't entirely sure who he was referring to, so I asked, I answered, if you are referring to these beings as being yourself, then yes, you have the power to turn the planet into heaven upon earth. If everyone realizes this power they hold inside of themselves, then the planet will change instantly. It's like the hundredth monkey effect. If everyone suddenly wakes up tomorrow and decides to be heart-centered, compassionate, loving, and caring of everyone around them, including themselves, the whole world's going to change instantly. And there'll be no more of this darkness that we're experiencing. But yet again, we have to go through this darkness and to see it for what it is within our collective in order for us to be able to overcome it and move forwards fourth question so you don't feel that we can choose heaven on earth before shall we say the rapture to which i answered rapture is actually what is leading us into the new version of earth <clears throat> the fourth density earth which symbolically we can liken to the garden of eden where our bodies will be part light and part flesh, we, we will be able to manifest instantly. Our bodies will not cast a shadow. 
we will essentially be the creator beings that we are now, but just in a lighter version. Almost like we will exist within the dreamscape when we go to sleep at night and we're traveling around in the astral realm. That's essentially what life will be like when we are living in fourth density. Reality will be much more fluid in that way. It won't be so dense and we won't be so constrained by the physical constraints of physicality, of, of third density, of this, of this physical plane of existence that we, in, that we currently inhabit as a collective. This is not to say that we cannot create heaven on earth right now, as in fact, a prerequisite of aligning ourselves to fourth density is that we feel ourselves as living on as heaven on earth right now, is that we feel ourselves as being light and happy and at peace with ourselves and with others and in service to others and ourselves. That's how we're going to move into this new version of earth. We have to we have to align to it before we can actually experience it experience it as those stuck in their own hell their own internal hell will not progress to fourth density at this window because they're carrying on to, they're carrying too much density too much emotional baggage and weight that is literally physically going to stop them from ascending or advancing evolving into this light body that i've described Fifth question, which was also more of a statement. I've heard that people not fully living their life path have to repeat certain scenarios in their next life because of free will. To which I answered, even though it appears that the amnesia experienced when incarnating upon this dense planetoid we call Earth does seem to create this idea that an individual is not fulfilling their path or purpose, even this is meant to be in the eyes of creation. It is the soul's journey. We can look back at previous lifetimes in the old version of Earth, pre-2012, pre-2016, where we had, we could observe that and where psychics were able to predict the future, predict the future very clearly with a, a tremendous accuracy. Whereas all kinds of psychic predictions nowadays, 2021, um, and even in the past three to four to five years, have fallen by the wayside. They're just, so many of these predictions are just not coming to pass. The, the energetics that are at play right now within Earth make it very difficult for spirit or non-physical perceivers to be able to see the kind of very to see detailed trajectories of individuals of individuals timelines specifically of course collectively it's easy to see it's still relatively possible to see the overall kind of trajectory because as a as a collective we are still moving in that particular kind of positive timeline where in the next decade, two, three, four, five, six decades, we are going to continue moving into this new version of Earth. A portion of us will, anyway. So that was my answers to certain questions regarding predeterminism and the direction that I believe that we are moving in as a human collective upon this planet. So thank you very much for watching hope this has been of value to someone out there and there we go until next time much love to you all bye bye